Welcome to the Alice in Wonderland podcast. This is a place for you to open your mind and let your sense of wonder, imagination, and most importantly, your curiosity loose. I'm your host, Georgia Alice, and today's episode is slightly different to what you may have heard in the past. In this episode, I have decided to share with you a recent meeting that I held online via Zoom with a group of around about 17 people who had registered to listen to a, a conversation with Russell Cunningham and myself where we were talking about how to access and eliminate your unconscious biases. I really love this episode and decided to share it with you because there are some amazing tips and tools to help you move through your own blocks and anything that you may have, whether it be pain, uh, emotional hurt and emotions that keep playing, playing out in your life. It's a really amazing tool that Russell talks to us about. And what I love about this episode is one of the listeners uh, volunteered to to experiment with what Russell was teaching. And we see her go from a place of Uh, recalling an event that happened five years ago and remembering the shock of the event, the disappointment and feeling it all and then using the technique to be able to overcome and remove those those blocked emotions completely from within her energetic system within her body. So I do encourage you to listen if you have a chance. Make sure you do watch the video as well so you can see the technique playing out. If you have any questions or would like to know more about the energy psychology uh, tool that we talk about, please reach out to Russell Cunningham or myself. We'd be more than happy to help you with that. And if you are enjoying these podcasts, make sure that you leave a comment, hit a like, give us a review, send me some feedback because I create these podcasts especially for you, my listeners, and I want to make sure you're getting the most out of them. Thank you. And most importantly, stay curious. Today is turning into the most curious adventure I've ever had. So thank you for everyone for coming on board. Uh, I just want to share with you why why I decided to hunt Russell down and give you a bit of background into why why you're here and how tonight came about. I've been running a course for a group of women going through a business building course and I can see we have Frances here who has actually just finished the course. Hi Frances. And in one of the modules we were talking about how the subconscious mind works and that we have um, we, we store our limiting beliefs and a lot of programming in the subconscious mind. And I teach people that there are four ways you can access and change the program. And the four ways being hypnosis, uh, energy psychology, repetition, or an emotional impact. And we started talking about energy psychology and we don't actually cover it in depth in the course. So uh, one of the participants, Renee, she actually asked me, can I do a session and, and talk more about this energy psychology? And I thought, why would I do that? I know all about it, but why not go to the expert, right? The person who actually taught me and the person who is now training people around Australia to, to use this, this method to access and eliminate unconscious blocks. Welcome, Russell. So Russell and I met uh, when I was going through a really terrible stage in my life, actually. I was going through a, a, not a very nice marriage breakup. And I was recommended to do some of this energy psychology work to help me get through a lot of the the things that were going on in my life. So I did. I went and saw Russell, had quite a number of sessions with him. And um, I wouldn't call him my therapist. I would call him more of my my coach. He actually coached me through that period in in my life. And the methods worked so well that I wanted to then learn how to do it myself, which I did. And I began using it uh, in my life constantly, got great results with it. In fact, 
I used uh, I used it today when something stressful came up for me and I just sat there and got through it very quickly. So I love this tool. So first of all, welcome, welcome, Russell. So Russell, if you can just talk to us a little bit about what is this energy psychology that George is going on about and maybe just a little bit about yourself as well. Thank you, Georgia. Uh, my background is in NLP and hypnosis and I've been doing that successfully since uh, 2000 or 2001 full time. And I kept having these really annoying people come up to me and saying, you don't have to do all that complex stuff. You can just tap on some acupuncture points and resolve things. And I, I knew that couldn't be true. So eventually in 2003, I think it was more out of frustration because I kept hearing these people raving about EFT that I attended a, a training and the results blew me away. And I remember when the guy running it said to me, think about something you have an emotional charge on. And I remembered my a time when my stepson and I had an argument. He slammed the door that hard that the window next to it shattered. And I could have cheerfully choked the life out of him. So in, in this uh, workshop, I, I thought about that time and that anger just rose up. I could feel my face get hot. My fists were clenching. And we did this crazy tapping thing. And within a few minutes, I was laughing about it. And I looked around the, other, looked around the room, people going, you know, my back doesn't hurt. I, I can move my neck. And it didn't make any sense to me. So I looked into the research on it. And at the time, there wasn't that much. The, the theory behind it was that we tune into a problem and we actually, uh, it sounds a bit counterintuitive. We use wording that actually uh, tunes into, even exaggerates the problem while we tap on these acupuncture points. And what's happening there is, when we tune into the problem, that creates a disturbance in our body's energy system. And it's that disturbance that causes the emotion, the anger, the sadness, the frustration, whatever the emotion is. And so with EFT, we will say the wording that tunes us in while we tap on these various acupuncture points. And that resolves the emotion behind it. To the point where um, at a recent workshop, we had one woman there with a spider phobia and at the end of the weekend she's holding a jar with a spider now uh the day before if you even just did that you know made your hand look like a spider she would cry and run but uh at the end of probably i'm guessing 30 40 minutes of doing eft her response to that was gone um you know you see um one lady had um pain in a coccyx from a, an accident that had happened some 20 odd years earlier after again, 45 minutes, maybe an hour of tapping, uh, was bouncing on her coccyx trying to find the pain. All weekend she couldn't find it. And when I spoke to her a few days ago, still pain free. For those, just a, just a show of hands, those that are, I can see, or even if you put it in the comments, who's heard of EFT before and who's used it, yeah? Yeah, cool. So um, EFT stands for, for the, those that haven't heard of it, is Emotional Freedom Techniques. Correct? Yeah. yeah. So you sort of explained a little bit about how it works. No, my experience of it was I went to somebody like yourself and you, you helped me uncover some quite deep-seated issues to help me move forward. So would somebody need to have a therapist, a coach, or whatever you want to call it to help them through it? Or is this something that you can be empowered to do on your own? What, what's, how do you see it and what do you recommend for people? That's a great question, Georgia. One thing about EFT is, is the simplicity of it. So when there is something obvious that's in your face right now, you can just do the tapping and resolve that. For example, my daughter, when she was five, would come home from school uh, saying, you know, Ashley fell over in the playground and was crying and I tapped him better. So a five-year-old was able to tap on a colleague and, you know, the crying stopped and he wasn't worried about his sore knee or his headache or whatever else was going on. So at that basic level, we, it's easy for, for anyone to apply EFT, particularly to resolve what's coming up. What I find, though, is that most of our... Most of our <laughs> are connected to 
issues that come from way back and it often takes some skill to resolve those. So what I would suggest is that if something's coming up for you now, do tapping straight away and you can often resolve that fairly quickly. If, if the result doesn't come fairly quickly, then it's a sign that there's probably something deep seated that may need some skill to resolve. And I'm just looking here. We have, we have Maria, who's uh, an EFT coach who trained with us some time ago, and Nolene, who's partway through the training. You know, if you see someone like that or, or myself, we can help you or Georgia to help get through to the real core issues that are often needed to resolve the more complex things. Yeah, I, I found that as I started to understand the process myself, I found found I was more empowered, but there have been times when there have been things that are so uh, deeply ingrained that the right questions and somebody with the right skills can actually delve a lot deeper into what it is that's that's causing that that emotional charge. I think that's the terms you used before that. You, you know, we feel like that. I had a terrible emotional charge today and I thought, and I hadn't actually used EFT for a while and I thought, I need to get this tool out. And within, I think it was three rounds and each round I I uncovered it a different emotion. So I started on the emotion that was there and the emotion that was there to start with was a lot of frustration. And then after that, as I was tapping on the frustration, the emotion of anger came up. And as I was tapping on anger, the emotion of I'm a failure came up. And I'm thinking, where's all this coming from? And, you know, being pissed off, all these things started to come up to the surface. And I was able to clear them. And I sat there and I went, I just feel great now. I can get on with the thing that I was actually a little bit scared to do. That's what it was. It was all these things stopping me making, moving forward, these emotions holding me back. So I found it really powerful to do that. So for you, Russell, you're, how long have you been, uh, so how long has it been now that you've been doing EFT and all, of the, all the work, the combined work that you do? Well, initially I started with NLP in 2000. I've been doing EFT since 2003, so it's about 15 years. And yeah. So it's been a full-time job. So but I did so, just then, like... Uh, basically six hours a day for, every day for all that time yeah so and as that was going to be my next question how often do you personally use it and what do you use it for okay i use it every day in several different ways um one is what i call tapping for no good reason so you don't necessarily have to wait until there's there's an issue or problem to get benefit from tapping you can tap anytime you like and that will uh, that will just help you feel better, help feel lighter, help you feel freer and clear, clearer. Uh, at the moment, I'm running a very complex business with lots going on. I've got, I've got staff away. And I know if I didn't have EFT, I would really struggle to manage what's going on. So on a day-to-day -day basis, anytime I feel a little bit of stress, I'll just tap straight away. Now, every now and then, there becomes something that it's important to focus on. For example, and I know none of you do this, but um, I had this habit that if there was some work that I didn't want to do, um, I would go over to the fridge and make myself a snack to uh, avoid doing the work. And so what I found then, it, when, once I became aware of that, going, hang on, this is the third time I've sat down here to complete my tax stuff. And it's the third time I've gone up and made a snack. Maybe it's time to tap. So then I'd, I'd tap on my resistance to doing the tap, uh, to doing the tax work. I'd tap on my desire to go and get the snack and resolve that. So that's the basic level of tapping on everyday things. Or, you know, if, if you get frustrated in traffic, I was talking to a, a one of my students from Bangkok. So I teach around the world as well. And uh, she's hoping to catch up today, but she was stuck in traffic as I was talking to her on messenger earlier. And, and she said, yeah, I've been stuck in the same place for 20 minutes. I'm tapping, I'm tapping. Don't worry. I'm tapping. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember the very first time I started tapping, you know, I didn't want people to see me because I mean, this looks weird, but I knew it got results and I, I know it gets results. I, I, there's a number of clients that I refer them to, to do tapping. I don't always take them through it. Um, just for those, those simple things. And it is a simple thing, but it, it can look a little, a little 
sticky. Sorry to say that. For oh, people that aren't used to it, right? It's like this, what are you doing? But when you understand, I guess, the science behind it, the acupressure points and what you're actually doing, um, it actually empowers you to then take control of those moments where the where the emotions are now getting stagnated within you instead of being released. And if we look to nature, so if we look to nature, if we look at, to nature and we see uh, a gazelle that's just being uh, hunted down by a lion, but it manages to escape. So it's, it starts off grazing, gets chased by a lion. It gets into this stress mode, all these, uh, these emotions and this stress comes up. And then once it escapes, it shakes it off and goes back to grazing, goes back to homeostasis. As humans, we don't do that. And tapping is a way. It's almost like it's that. That's the shaking we're doing. That's us releasing the emotion so it, we can actually move forward and just go back to our grazing, so to speak. Yes, and, and it's fascinating now. Now there's uh, over 100 scientific tests and research papers validating EFT. And some of the research coming up is fascinating. We've got um, one that was done by uh, church and uh, a group of researchers showed uh, uh, was it war veterans that had PTSD and elevated cortisol levels. For, for those that don't know, cortisol is a major stress hormone. Um, just one hour of tapping gave them an average of 24% drop in cortisol levels. It's mm -hmm. also been shown the amygdala, which is the, the kind of fight, flight, panic center of our brain, calms down and and the activity in that area reduces and gives us better frontal cortex activity after tapping yeah. so if someone's really stressed and i'm sure a lot of people relate to this if you feel stressed your brain doesn't work you know especially uh, think about when you meet someone out of context you haven't seen them for a while you go oh who's that who's that what's their name and and you're feeling stressed and frustrated because you don't remember their name and then as soon as they go, you go, oh, yeah, that's Sally. And, and you want to say, hey, Sally, I remember your name. But you'd feel like a bit of a, uh, a twit doing that. So when we're stressed, our amygdala becomes more active and the frontal lobe quietens down. So tapping actually reverses that, gets rid of the stress and makes things work better. Yeah, because you, you can't create in a state of stress. Absolutely not. Because the frontal lobe is where all the creation happens. That's where all the resourcefulness, all the ideas happen. But down here, it's like, send all my energy to my legs and let me get the hell out of here, right? <laughs> Absolutely. The, the analogy I use is um, thousands of years ago, that was really helpful when the saber-toothed tiger jumped out and we could club it, spear it or run away and, and hide in our, in our cave. And of course, when that happens, the blood flow goes to that amygdala, what's also known as a reptilian brain. And reptiles, lizards, snakes, things like that, crocodiles, they're good at running away and they're good at attacking to get their food. Mm -hmm. But, you know, lizards and crocodiles haven't invented the wheel. And the reason is that we need this frontal lobe for that to happen. When we stress, that's just switched off. Yeah. So... I'm sure people hitting there going, this is great. You're telling us about this EFT, this method, this and how, and, you know, telling us all these great stories of the results we can get. Can you give us just a basic uh, demonstration practice so that we can, everyone here that's on the call and those who are going to listen to the recording, have some, a practical tool that they can use when they're faced with that saber tooth tiger, which is really the mother-in-law, the colleague, the, 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 the person on reality TV that we're yelling at through the, t whatever it is that's triggering whatever, all those yeah. buttons. <laughs> <laughs> so, so can you walk us through what, how, how I can empower myself to actually utilize this and what maybe just a couple of examples of some more uh, situations where we may use this? Absolutely. So what I like to do so everyone can actually experience, because I, th this is fascinating for me, the, the claims of EFT sounded outrageous and so I wouldn't even listen. What made the difference for me is when I tuned into something that I had some emotional charge on and I did the tapping. Now, what I'd like for all those people watching is to either think of a specific event where they have some emotional charge or tune into a specific physical pain or discomfort or stiffness in the body. Now, if you're working on something on the body, I'd like it to be something that has a pain or discomfort level of greater than a five out of 10. 
and it needs to be something where there's a discomfort level now. So if you have a lower back ache, a neck ache, a headache, a sore shoulder, tune into that and give the intensity of that pain a score out of 10, with 10 being the worst and zero, it's just not there anymore. If, if you don't have any physical discomfort, I'd like you to think of a specific event that had some emotional charge, maybe a conflict with your partner or colleague or an ex-partner. But what's important here is that it needs to be a very specific event. So if you say, oh, my partner always nags me or, or the boss is on my back or, or this employee is always late, that's, that's generalized. But if you say, if you think about the time when my partner said I was too fat in front of my friends at my birthday party, that's a very specific event. So think of a, a very specific event where you have some emotional charge and just notice what that emotion is. Is it sadness? Is it anger? Is it hurt? Is it fear or worry or anxiety? And as you tune into that, give it a score out of 10 and then just notice where you feel it in your body. For example, maybe you've got anger in your jaw or throat or maybe it's anxiety in, in your chest or in your heart or churning in your stomach. So whether it's a physical thing uh, or an emotional thing, give it a score out of 10 and describe it to yourself as quickly as possible. Now, what I'd like you to do when you're doing this is, is now write it down. So you might say, um, uh, pain in my shoulder, six out of 10, or, or headache, seven out of 10, or um, anger when my partner was home late for the third time this week, seven out of 10, whatever the specific issue is and the emotion. Uh, and emotion or the physical pain. Now just give everyone a minute to do that and make sure you have something very specific. Great. Now what we do, normally we would use wording that very specifically describes the problem. For example, um, I might say, even though I have this tight pain in the end of my left shoulder, or even though I have this thumping headache in the back of my head or this tight pain behind my eyes. Uh, so, but in this case, what I'd like you to do is just think about your specific thing and tune right into it. And then we start by doing what we call the setup. Now I'm going to replace the problem with the, just the term your problem. So I might be saying, uh, even though I have this problem, I accept myself deeply and completely. And you might be saying, even though I have this ache in my lower back, I, I accept myself deeply and completely. Okay, so we start by tapping on the side of the hand. You can tap on either either side. And where we're tapping is, is between the, on the edge of the hand between the knuckles, a little finger and the wrist. So if we tap like that. The karate chop, if you're gonna karate yeah. chop someone. Yeah, we used to call that the karate chop point and then political correctness has gone one bit too far. And apparently some people, they say are offended by that. But yes. Okay, well, we're not here, are we? The hand okay, that you okay. karate chop a board. <laughs> and my apologies to anyone who finds that offensive. So just tap on the side of the hand, tune into that, that problem. Uh, if it's emotion, note whether it's anger or sadness or hurt or something else. If it's... Um, if it's a physical pain, notice whether it's a sharp or dull pain. And we just say, even though I have this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. Now, I'll just repeat that again. Even though I have this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I have this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. Now, that's known as the setup. Originally, we, all, we always used to tap on that three times. Uh, EFT has been evolving. Now I usually only tap on that once. Now the next point we tap on is the center top of the head. And I usually tap with both hands just because to me that feels more balanced. It'll work exactly the same if you tap on one and just tune in and say, all this problem. Good. Then the next point is on the very inside of the eyebrows immediately above the bridge of the nose. If you, if you have something in one hand, you can tap on one side or you can tap on both sides if you like and just say this problem, good. 
Now, the next point is on the side of the eye and it's on the bone right next to the corner of the eye. Now, I have people say, Russell, are there any risks with EFT? Well, ladies, if you've got long fingernails, use the pads, don't poke yourself in the eye. So we tap right next to the side of the eye and tune into that problem and say, this problem, good, very good. Now, the next point is what we call the under eye point and it's directly below the pupil. Again, if you've got one hand busy, you can tap with one hand or you can tap with two either way and just say this problem. Good. The next point is in the uh, just above the lip and under the nose. So we call that the under the nose point. And just tune into how you feel about that problem or that physical pain and say this problem. Good. Now the next point is the chin point. And it's actually in the valley of the chin more than the end of the chin. So again, tune into the problem and say this problem. That's right. Now, the next point is called the collarbone point. It's, it's actually a bit of a misnomer because it's actually immediately below the collarbone. So if you find those bumps of the collarbone here and slide down, it's, there's that little hollow just under the collarbone and yeah, that's right, under the collarbone, but above the rib below it. Tune into that specific problem and say this problem. That's right. Now, the next point is the underarm point. And on ladies, that's where the bra strap goes across here, but I'm not gonna put on a bra to show you. Um, if you're not wearing a bra, it's a hand's width below the armpit. Now, a lot of people will find that spot feels a bit tender. If that's the case, just don't tap too hard. And just tap that underarm point and say, this problem. Good. And then we go to the top of the head. And again, tuning in to that emotional issue or the physical pain and say, this problem. Uh, on the inside of the eyebrows, this problem. On the bone next to the side of the eye, this problem under the eye, this problem, under the nose, this problem, in the valley of the chin, this problem, collarbone, this problem, under the arm, this problem. Okay. One more round on top of the head, all this problem, on the inside of the eyebrows, all this problem. Inside of the eye, all this problem. Under the eye, all this problem. Under the nose, all this problem. In the valley of the chin, all this problem. Under the collarbone, all this problem. And under the arm, all this problem. Good. Now, take a moment now to tune into that, that problem again, that specific issue. And as you tune into that problem, give it a score now out of 10. And what I'd like to do is get some feedback from people now what, as to what was your score when you started and what was your score after those rounds of tapping. Okay, Nolene. Hurt in my heart, seven, now a four, nice. So Josephine, a three, three. what was it beforehand? Uh, as well, Amanda Laurie, a three. I don't know what they were at their starting point. Oh, Josephine was an eight to a three, very good. Amanda was a seven to a three. Uh, Maria started an eight, then reduced to a two, massive. I started at a seven, I think I got down to a one or a zero. It was, there's nothing much there now. Um, Gabriel, eight to a four, really good. Fizza, eight, now a one. Good work. Right. Good work. And it's, it's interesting, while, while the numbers are coming in, one of the things I did today, so as we're doing it quite generally now, 
as I was doing it, I was getting really like, as something came up related to the problem, I would be swearing and I'd be getting all the negative emotions. Oh, yeah. And I was going really hell for leather because I wanted it cleared and I just wanted to get on with my day and just not have this drag me down. I want to get back to grazing, right? I was sick of being chased by this, this, you know, mythological imaginary lion that was chasing me down on the savannah. And you, seriously, I was, I was just sitting and at the end I just had tears. Like I could feel the emotions were gone because it was just, just letting it go. So I noticed sometimes when I do it, sometimes afterwards I yawn, sometimes there's, there's um, tears. There's always been some sort of energetic shift afterwards. Do you experience that happens with people as well uh, on an energetic sort of level like that? Yes, absolutely. I get the typical responses are people are either saying they feel very calm some people feel energized. I often have people say my, my hands and my, and my bo whole body is buzzing. That happens from, from time to time. It doesn't, I don't get that result very often, but a lot of my clients do. The most common result for me is I just feel really calm and relaxed. Mm. Um, prior to EFT, I was always really wide up. I'd struggled to sleep most nights and I found I was sleeping better than ever before. But probably the biggest thing was physical pain. Um, I'd had some serious car accidents when I was young, hit and run by a car at 17, broke my neck in a car accident when I was 24. And I used lots of painkillers all the time. But after using FT, most of the time I have zero pain at all. But whenever a doctor sees my x-rays, they start writing out a script for heavy duty painkillers. Mm, amazing, right? Absolutely amazing. Hey, Stella, awesome. Tightness in her throat, eight to a three as well. So, and Josephine saying she was feeling really rested. So some really good results. So we've got a little bit of time now. Is there anybody here who has a specific issue that would like to take advantage of having a complimentary session now with um, Russell, taking advantage of 15 minutes and I think your sessions for 15 minutes would probably be around about a hundred dollars or more. So um, for rewarding you for being here, is there anyone who would like to go through an issue, share an issue? There are other people here with you and, and see how Russell does it on a specific issue. Is there anybody willing to put up their hand and volunteer? Vidya, that was quick Vidya. Gee, right. now I'm really happy about that. Future just finished one a program with me, so this is awesome. <laughs> do I have to spell out the problem, or can I just say an issue, or do I have to specifically? Good um, question. Now, uh, what's important is that you're tuned into something very specific, but there right. are ways you can do that in the privacy of your own mind. I just need to ask enough questions to know that you're very specific. Sure. Um, uh, for for example, and, and I know this it doesn't exactly relate to you, but I was running a workshop once where we we're working on a, on a woman's um, uh, binge eating. So if she came home, there was no one at home, she would eat until the fridge was empty. Then she'd go up the shop and, and get a whole load more and just keep eating. And we tracked back the cause of that to being around when her grandfather died at the age of four and we, we did some EFT around that. And then she mentioned being in the house when she was alone. And from watching her physiology, um, I had the feeling that she may have had some abuse happen in the house when she was at home. And so I said, is it okay if we resolve this in the privacy of your own mind? So I said, well, tune into that event. What's the feeling? And we just tapped through it and there were 45 people there, but no one knew the details of it, but she was feeling the details and going through the details of the event in her mind. Um, does, is that helpful for you? Yeah. So you want me to um, think about the incident that affected me, that hurt me. Yes. Which had a huge impact on me. Yeah. And then go through this process of tapping those spots. Am I right? A absolutely. Now, let me ask you a few questions about this, first of all. Yeah. Um, when was this event? Uh, about five years back. Okay, good. And if this, if this event was a movie, how long would that movie go for? Oh, 
depends on how imaginative the director is. Um, ten, five minutes, ten minutes. I mean, just just that incident. I'm not relating bringing up yes. anything else. Yeah, just that incident would be between say five and ten. Ten minutes. Okay, good, good. Um, we we can do that now then. What I'd like you to do is tune into the moment just before there was any intensity. And I want you to get in, in your mind's eye to where you were just before that event started. Where I was, meaning in my mind frame? No, where, where you were physically. Like, oh, you yeah. know, I was, stand, I was standing in the land room or I was in my office at work or wherever. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. good. Now, I want you to tune into the very first emotional part of that. And what is the first emotion that you feel? Is it anger or sadness or hurt or something else? Shock. Disbelief. Shock. Yes. Disbelief. Yeah, good. Shock. Right. Okay. And what's the intensity of that disbelief? Wow. It was severe. I actually feel it now. And I, every time when I think about it, I still feel it. And it's still yeah. shock and disbelief, um, disappointment perhaps, but shock and disbelief are the first, okay. first belief. Let's, first. Let's, let's start with that shock and disbelief. Now, uh, something very important here I didn't mention before. When we're doing this exercise, it's very important that everybody who's watching does the same tapping and says the same words with the intention of supporting you but also with the intention of resolving something else for yourself. For example, I could be tapping with you saying the shock and disbelief, but if I've got an ache in my lower back, I can have, I can go, my lower back aches are three out of 10. I, I have the intention of resolving that, but I'm going to focus with you on this. Okay. So okay. just tap on the side of the hand like this. Yep. So we, we're tapping on this edge with, Oh yeah. With four. Yeah. yeah, that's it. And where in your body do you feel that shock when the, when the first happens? It tightened chest. Good. And, and has, theory. of course, Terry. Yeah. Even though I feel all this shock across my chest. Yep. So repeat this out loud. Even though I feel all this shock across my chest. Even though I feel the shock across my chest. I accept myself as much as I can. I set myself as much as I can. Yes, good. Let's repeat that. Even though I feel the shock in my chest. Even though I feel the shock in my chest. When this thing happened. When this thing happened. I accept myself deeply and completely. I set myself deeply and completely. Good. Now we'll just tap on top of the head and I want you to tune right into that. Yep. And just say, all the shock in my chest. All the shock in my chest. Good. Then on the inside of the eyebrow, and see yourself right at that beginning of the event, all the shock in my chest. All the shock in my chest. Then on the bone next to the side of the eye, all the shock in my chest. All the shock in my chest. Then under the eye, all the shock in my chest. All the shock in my chest. Under the nose, all the shock in my chest. All the shock in my chest. Now with this one, try to get in the very center. So you might just do that with one hand in, okay. the, in the very center under the nose. Yep. All the shock in my chest. All the shock in my chest. Good. And then in the valley of the chin, all the shock in my chest. All the shock in my chest. And then just below the collarbone, all the shock in my chest. All the shock in my chest. That's good. And then under the arm, around about where the top of the bra strap goes across, all the shock in my chest. All the shock in my chest. The feeling I have is that's already reduced a lot. But when you tune into that first part of the event, how big is that shock now out of 10? I guess intellectually, I've I've understood that it's happened. So the the severity of the shock is not there, but the disappointment and um, disappointment and what else can I say? The sadness is still there. Yeah, good. 
Good. Yeah, but the shock, I guess I've overcome because I've come to, I've, I've known that it's actually happened and I know it's happened. Okay. So. Good. Now, let, let me just observe something here. Yep. When, when you first tuned into that, you said, I can feel it right now and it was here in the chest. Yep. So correct me if I'm wrong. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Now, mm. it would appear to me that the shock part is resolved, but now we've moved to the next piece of the movie. Is that correct? Possibly. Possibly. Yes. And, but, and also I was, I was tuning in, uh, concentrating and focusing on how to get it right. And I was following you. So perhaps, you know, my focus okay. shifted a bit too. Now, th this is beautiful because one of the things that happens with EFT is because it shifts things so deeply, yeah, and it's such a simple process. Yeah, people will usually try to explain away the results because they can't believe that that shock, that has been a problem for ever since this event, mm -hmm. can be gone forever like that. So what I, what I want to do is just do some tapping to secure in the gains we have. Let's just tap on the side of the side of the hand here. And am I thinking about the uh, sadness now because the shock is gone? Okay, well, let, let's go to the sadness then. Okay. So, so I want you to close your eyes now. Imagine yourself right in that event. Yep. And what's the intensity of the sadness that you feel now when you think about it? I'm still sad. I'll be honest. I'm still sad. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I expect you would be. Yeah. So is, is, that a, is that a 7 out of 10 sadness or a 3 out of 10? What would it be out of 10 now? Seven, eight out of 10. Good. And where do you feel that sadness? It's heavy in my head. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Let's tap on the side of the hand and say, even though I feel this sadness. Even though I feel this sadness. And I've had it for all these years. And I've had this for all these years. And there's no way this silly tapping can make it disappear in a couple of minutes. There's no way the silly tapping can make it disappear in a couple of minutes. There's no way it can disappear forever in a couple of minutes tapping. There's no way this can disappear in a couple of minutes of tapping. I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Good. Now I want you to tune into that sadness and tap on the top of the head and just say all this sadness all the sadness. And then on the inside of the eyebrow, it's impossible for this sadness to disappear forever. It's impossible to, for the sadness to disappear forever. Good. And then on the bone next to the side of the eye, all this sadness. All this sadness. Under the eye, I've been carrying this sadness for all these years. I've been carrying this sadness for all these years. Under the nose, all this sadness. All the sadness. And the, in the belly of the chin, all this sadness. All the sadness. Then under the collarbone, all this sadness. All the sadness. And under the arm, all this old sadness. All this old sadness. Good. Now, I want you to tune into that part of the event and try as hard as you can to feel sad about it. And what is the sadness now out of 10? It's definitely lesser because, again, probably because of the shift um, and in my focus. Well, it's probably because we've, we've uh, straightened up your energy system in relation to that event, or, or at least that part of the event. So when you think of that, just that part, is there mm -hmm. any remaining sadness at all? Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, so how would you score the remaining sadness that you feel right now when you think about that? Between a four and a five. Yep, and is it still in the head or is it in the heart or somewhere else? It's not in my head as much as it was. It's kind of dissipated. 
I don't know where it is now. Yeah, okay. So let's let's tap here on the side of the hand. Even though this sadness is not in my head anymore. Even though the sadness is not in my head anymore. I have no idea where it's gone to. No idea where it's gone to. Maybe someone stole it on me. Maybe someone stole it on me. I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Tap on top of the head. All this sadness. All the sadness. On the inside of the eyebrows. It can't have disappeared that quickly. Can't have disappeared quickly. On the side of the eye. I must be just distracted. I must be just distracted. Under the eye. There's no way it can be gone for good. There's no way it can go for good. All this sadness. All the sadness. On the chin, all this sadness. All the sadness. Under the collarbone, all this sadness. All the sadness. Under the arm, all this sadness. All the sadness. Good. Now, I'd like you to tune into the next part of that event, if we can. Or is there... Yeah, so what's the next bit that happened? You don't have to tell me what that is, but tune into it in your mind's eye. Yep. And what's the next piece? What's the emotion on that when you think about it now? Stress, because I reacted, questioning the situation and obviously because I was in shock and disbelief and I was basically yeah. resisting back fighting in other words. Yeah. So is, is that, is that anger when you fight back or what? is it frust No, what's, what's the emotional feeling when you fight back? Anger and disappointment. Good, good. Um, let's go to the disappointment first, I think, maybe. Um, no, hang on. Wh which, is, which is the strongest, the anger um, or the disappointment? Disappointment was the base, so base feeling, but anger because, you know, it's just the um, helplessness and frustration. So the, the emotion that burst out is anger. But disappointment, Good, okay. uh, I would say the deeper emotion if i'm right sorry what what was the deeper one disappointment the disappointment yes yeah. so here's what usually happens when when an event happens yep. initially we'll feel anxiety or sadness or disappointment or hurt or something like that yeah and then usually what comes shortly after that is we go oh it's your fault now i'm angry at you but exactly. the, fir the first thing yeah so the first thing we feel is the sadness or the disappointment. So when you think about that next part of the event, what's the intensity of the disappointment you feel now when you think it, think about it? Seven, eight. Yeah. Strong. Yep. strong. And where, where in your body do you feel that? I'm kind of bursting into a headache. So perhaps in my ah, head. Good. Good. Let's tap here. By the way, do you get a lot of headaches? I do. I, I never used to, but off late, yes, I do. Okay. Is that since this event you've been having more headaches? Um, probably this was a trigger. I Look, if I get stressed, I think I get headache. Okay. Yeah. Once once you learn how to do this EFT, you, you may never need to have a headache again. I'll just let you know that because the stress okay. causes the headache. Yep. And you can tap the stress away. Okay. Okay. Now I, I've had I've had a lot of clients come with me with migraines and they come in wearing dark glasses and holding their hand over here and their partner brings them in and after half an hour or an hour, they take off the glasses and they go, What what do you do with my migraine? Okay. Okay. So yes. so Tell me, tell me about the feeling in your head that's come up when you feel all that disappointment. Tightness. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, let's tap on the side of the hand. Yeah. Even though I feel this tightness in my head. Even though I feel this tightness in my head. When I think about all my disappointments and anger. All my disappointments and anger. I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I have all this disappointment headache. Although I have this disappointment headaches. I accept myself deeply and completely. I accept myself deeply and completely. And just tap in the center top of the head, this disappointment headache. This disappointment headache. On the inside of the eyebrows, this disappointment headache. This disappointment headache. On the side of the eye, this disappointment headache. This disappointment headache. Under the eye, this disappointment headache. This disappointment headache. Under the nose, this disappointment headache. This disappointment headache. And then in the crease of the chin, all this disappointment headache. All this disappointment headache. Under the collarbone, this disappointment headache. Disappointment headache. Under the arm, this disappointment headache. The disappointment headache. Then on top of the head, this disappointment headache. This disappointment headache. On the inside of the eyebrows, this disappointment headache. This disappointment headache. On the side of the eye, all this disappointment headache. All this disappointment headache. Under the eye, this tension headache can't just disappear. This tension headache just can't disappear. I can't just relax because of this tapping and have the headache disappear. I just can't relax because of this headache. Okay, good. Just tap under the nose. This tension headache. This tension headache. On the chin, this disappointment tension headache. The disappointment tension headache. Under the collarbone, this disappointment headache. The disappointment headache. The arm, I can't just relax and let it go. Just can't relax and let it go. Actually, you're looking a fair bit more relaxed. I am. How, how's your head feeling? Me. I'm not, I can't relax very easily. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't relax very easily. I, I, up until now. <laughs> I'm clean in the ass. Yes, I don't relax very easily. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So I, I want question. you. Yes. I thought we are meant to have a positive reinforcement saying, this is going to go away. This is going to go away. Instead, you're saying, this is not going to go away. And this is being silly the way I'm tapping myself. So I, I'm a bit puzzled with that. that. That's a brilliant question. And let, let me explain it this way. For many years, I used positive affirmations. So, you know, I'd be, I, I'd be dead broke and I'd, and I'd be driving along in my car and have these affirmations taped on my car and I'd say wealth and abundance flows easy to me. And, and I was driving this old car where, where I'm going, please engine just last me another six months. Right. This is in the late nineties. I was at the end of my second marriage and, and I was in a, a sales role that had the potential to earn a lot of money, but I was sabotaging because of all the emotional stuff that was going on. Yeah. Now here's, here's what would happen. I would say I, I easily attract wealth and abundance. You know, um, I earn over a hundred thousand dollars a year easily and consistently. And every cell in my body would say, you idiot, Russell, you can't earn that much. You're not smart enough. You don't work hard enough. Blah, 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 blah. All the negative self-talk would come up. Now, what I realized was that, that positive affirmations have value if they are close enough to what, you, what you're getting at. For example, if I'm earning $100,000 a year and I say I easily and consistently earn $110,000 a year, that's not such a big jump. Probably that's believable. And if I say that often enough, then, then I'll begin to believe it. I'll act like it. And before long, I'll see that coming into my bank balance. But yeah. if, 
if someone's earning $30,000 a year, say, thank you universe for $300,000 a year, every cell in their body says, you can't do that. You're too dumb. You're, you're too old. You're too young, whatever. Now, what we do with EFT is we recognize the problem and then we do the tapping, which resolves the problem. Okay. So if, if you have a sink full of dishes and you walk around the kitchen going, my sink is clean, my sink is clean, my sink is clean, it doesn't clean the dishes. You've, you've got to go in, into the sink and say, well, there's the dishes and you've got to pull them out and wash them. With EFT, we say the words that actually bring up and recreate the disturbance in the body, in the energy system, remembering that it's that disturbance in the energy system that causes the emotion or the headache or the pain. And then we tap on these acupuncture point, which balances out the energy system in relation to the problem we're focusing on. So think of it as cleaning the dishes out. Yep. So, so that's a great question. So that's why we actually say the negative. So if I, if I suspect that, that my client is having trouble believing it, I, I'll tap and say, even though this is stupid and there's no way I can believe this is going to work because that will actually clear the, the limiting belief and allow the positive result to come in. Now, let me just check. Um, how are you feeling now, Vidya? Lighthearted because like it's, it, it, the exercise seemed funny, especially when you talked about dishes. Yes, I have a sink full of dishes now and that was my first irritation. I was actually tossing between, should I do the dishes or should I do this? Because I hate <laughs> it. <laughs> so, Isn't it funny the example that comes in? <laughs> it, it was, I, I, was, I was literally going into the dish before I was logging into my system. So that's exactly what happened. And, I, and I, was, I, I was getting irritable. So I said, I'd rather take a break and do this and then go back to my dishes. Good choice. I think so. I don't doubt it. Thank you. That's good. Now, I just want to check in on something to make sure we've thoroughly cleaned the dishes in your mind. Okay. So if, if you, I want, what I want you to do is run through the movie of that event in your mind. Yep. And I want you to try as hard as you can to feel any upset, any anger or sadness or hurt or any emotion at all. Because there's usually one or two little bits that we might have missed. Disappointment is still there, but definitely it is um, lesser. Like, as I said, okay. we, we've just made the situation lighter. So yeah. I don't think okay, that's much. So what I'd like you to do is think about the worst part of that event and try as hard as you can to feel a disappointment. I want to make sure there's none left. I want to get every dish out of that sink. You haven't broken it, have you? It looks like you... The dishes? No, the, the disappointment. It looks oh, like the you've disappointment. Um, look, it's there because it's real. It happened and I know it's happened. So it's real. So I can't say okay, it's at all. It's still there. Yeah. But as That's a sort, I'm, um, I'm relaxed. Okay. So the problem exists, but I'm not reacting as much. Maybe I, I can. Let's just do this one. Let's tap on the side of the here, hand here. Even though it's impossible not to have any disappointment. Even though it's impossible not to have any disappointments. Because the event is real. Because the event is real. It really did happen. It really did happen. And there's no way I could feel okay about it. And there's no way I could feel okay about it. I accept myself anyway. I accept myself anyway. Even though it was a really bad thing. Even though it was a really bad thing. And I should be affected by it from the whole of my life. I should be or shouldn't be? I should be affected. I should be. Okay, I, I should, should be affected by the, for the whole of my life. The whole of my life. And there's no way I could be totally free and happy. There's no way I could be totally free and happy. Unless I just let it go. I accept myself deeply and completely. 
I accept myself deeply and completely. And then just tap on the top of the head. All this remaining disappointment. All this remaining disappointments. On the inside of the eyebrow, it can't just disappear forever. Just can't disappear forever. It did happen. It did happen. And then under the eye. So I have to feel disappointed forever. I have to feel this part forever. And the nose, there's no way I could just be relaxed and happy. There's no way I could be relaxed and happy. And have no more headaches. And have no more headaches. I have to have some disappointment. I have to have some disappointments. Okay. Now, I want you to try as hard as you can to actually feel some disappointment in your body. Yep. And is that disappointment about this event or something else? I'm slightly distracted. Something else comes in my mind. Okay, good. I moved yeah. on from that event to something else. Good. Now, if we had longer, what I would do is track from one event to the next and apply EFT to two or three or maybe a dozen different events where okay. you had, had disappointment and shock. Yep. And, and that would completely erase it. But just, just with the little bit we've done now, we've made a really good start on maybe completely resolving or maybe mostly resolving a very significant event. That, yeah. That's my take on it. Is that how it feels to you? Yeah. I mean, as I said, I got distracted and I'm thinking about something else, not exactly about the incident that I thought of first. That, that's right. But 10 minutes ago... Yeah. You could think about it and it would cause an emotional charge. Correct. So, so try as hard as you can to think about it in that way again. Yeah. Yeah. What, um, what have you got? Margaret, I'm not going to think about it anymore. That's how I feel now. No, I, okay. But I want you to try to get the upset. Try as hard as you can. I just want to make sure that we've. Yeah. I, yeah. It. You're actually challenging me to throw it out of the window and be happy. Is that what you're doing? No, what, what I'm actually doing, uh, and I want to explain to this. I just see it, bugger it, whatever be it. I could tell <laughs> it anymore, bugger it. I'm just gonna be not happy. Might as well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially when you say, there's no way I'm gonna not feel about it and I'm gonna be sad for the rest of my life. I feel, no, that's not what I'm gonna do. <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> I, I i tell you what I, what i see now you you look like you have the joy of a little girl at christmas yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely definitely lighter definitely definitely yes. lighter thank you yes it's true Good that point. i'm lighter yeah but thank i'm you. trying to understand and grasp the technique you're doing so i can grasp it better and if I need to do it for myself, I can try and do it. Especially yes. when I go down and do my dishes, I'm going to say, dishes, dishes, get out of my sink. Dishes. <laughs> yeah. Here's, here's what I'm going to do. For anyone that gets in touch with me, I will send you a one-page cheat sheet on EFT. Okay. So I can email it to you. And I can email you a... Um, a link to some of my videos of using EFT on different things. So there's one, for example, on neck pain. Yep. So if you have headache or neck pain, you can just watch that video and tap along as if you're one of the people with the neck problems and it'll get rid of headaches or neck pain usually. Okay. Okay. But if I'm you have any problems. I'm yeah. when I get my, that nasty headache of mine and I'll see if uh, that works on me. And I'll well, challenge it saying, this is not going to go away. This is not going to go away. Exactly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and and I'll suggest this too. Keep tapping till it's right down to a zero. So, some people will have a headache that's a, that's a seven out of 10 and they'll yep. tap it down to a, a three or four yep. and then just leave it. But, but keep, keep going and try to get to a zero. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll Lovely. give it a go. Thank you. Thank Beautiful. you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Big
Great. Thank you, Vija, for putting yourself on the line there. And I can see, I can see your analytical mind going, this, how does this work? It's working, but I don't want to admit that it's working because it's too simple. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the beauty of it. And that sometimes can, we can get stuck and not want to do it because it just seems too simple. And we think life needs to be complicated. And this is a thing with energy psychology. Once you start to understand how your body functions and all the energy meridians within your body and where it stores emotions, like you heard Russell asking you, where in your body do you feel that? So it's actually starting to release those emotions that are trapped there. And it's a really powerful tool for you in any situation to be able to do that. So I can I can see I can see if you're struggling intellectually to to admit sort of that uh, this works because it's too simple. I don't know why it works, but I'm not going to admit it until I know the science behind it, right? <laughs> Which there is. Yes, that's spot on. Yeah. Yeah. So there is plenty of science, and we're just going to have a chat tonight for an hour. We've gone a little bit over an hour, and we can't give you everything in an hour. But Russell has kindly offered to send. And what we'll do, uh, because you've all registered, I have everyone's emails. Um, I'll share them if everyone's okay with Russell and get him just to email uh, everybody out the cheat sheet and uh, also links to the videos as well if you're all okay with that. So That's awesome. Thanks. for those that are still here, and I know we've had a few people on different time zones that have jumped in a little halfway through or towards the end. Are there any questions? Now, I just want to go back because I know Renee asked one earlier and I know Maria answered it, but I just want to share that because a lot of people might have the same question uh, and may not have seen the chat. So Renee asked, do you have to say the problem out loud or can you say it in your head if you're in a place uh, where saying it out loud is not appropriate? And then Marie, Maria kindly answered, uh, you can say it in your head. So keep that in mind. If you're, if you're somewhere and you don't want to say it out loud, maybe at work or maybe you've gone into a public toilet or a work toilet to do some tapping, you don't want to be sitting there going, I hate my boss, they're really terrible and he's starting doing this really loud. You want to say that in your head, right? So great yeah. question, Renee. Are there any other questions? Um, any other questions from anyone? So Amanda's asked, are they the only spots you tap? Are there other areas you can tap something like uh, tap for something like back pain? So, Russell, do you want to grab that question? Yes, great question. First of all, the original uh, EFT also involved tapping on the top edge of, of the fingers. Mm. There was some tapping on the gamut point here. Um, we'd sometimes tap on on the uh, liver point. Um, and in in my own practice, uh, I've come up with an additional 11 tapping points that I occasionally use that are not part of the official EFT process. However, for most things, just those points will work whatever you're doing. So whether it's a backache or an ingrown toenail or a headache or anger at the teacher that bullied you at school or frustration with your children, you tap the same points and focus in on the problem. The, the other thing I want to say is this, that if you're right in a problem, you can just tap. So uh, for example, a few years ago, I had a phone call from the lady who I thought was my last life partner saying it's all over. And I was absolutely heartbroken. So while I was on that phone call, I was tapping like crazy. And by the time the phone call ended, I'd, I'd resolved probably 90% of the emotion that had come up from that event. Now, of course, I, I went back home that night and I tried to lie in bed and all the fruit salad started flipping around my head again. So I did some more tapping. And then for about a week or so, I tapped on all the different things that came up. And after a while, I thought, okay, I've done as much as I can myself. So, uh, so even though I'm an EFT master trainer of trainers, I can't be as objective working on myself as I can when I'm working with someone else. So I called a colleague of mine in the US who's the same qualification as I am, and we had a session via Skype, and she asked those curly questions that got, that got in underneath my, my, yeah, I'm a tough man, it's okay stuff, and got back to childhood issues with my mother that set me up for those emotional problems. So it was really important for me to resolve that mum stuff and, and a bit of dad stuff and sister stuff and so on, to be free of that. 
Thanks, Russell. There's another question coming from Josephine. So Josephine's asking, are there any good readings out there? So where can you point Josephine to learn a little bit more around uh, the, the tapping? Yes, there's um, AMET International, that's A-A-M-E-T international.org, I think it is. Um, AMET International has a free manual that you can download that, that, is, um, that is very, very concise, but quite complete. So I think that would be a really good source. Um, I run a lot of workshops from time to time. So if anyone wants to find more, they can give me a call, find out about the workshops or one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, there's, there's also quite a few books. Uh, any of the books by Anne Adams uh, are very good. So if you look up Anne Adams EFT, she has some great books. Um, they, they would be probably the best sources straight up. Yeah, another good book is The Tapping Solution, which mentions some of the uh, some of the research. All right, beautiful. So I've got a couple more questions coming through and I'm gonna ask these ones because they're, they're very pertinent. So first on Francis Marsden's asking, where do you run your sessions? So Francis, do you mean sessions as in training or do you mean sessions as in one-on-one -on -one sessions? Just maybe answer that for both. <laughs> Yeah, okay, sure. So, uh, first of all, the one-on-one -on -one sessions are mainly run from Wonga Park, although because of Skype and Zoom and Messenger, um, in the last, weeks, uh, last week I've had clients from Thailand, from India, from England, America, just about every state of Australia. And I had some people that only live half an hour away that still work with me via Skype because they can't be bothered getting in their car. Um, so I work from here. I also work from Clifton Hill, um, Clifton Hill or Collingwood, usually once a week, usually on a Wednesday. Um, my next couple of weeks there are booked out, but uh, I do that a fair bit. I also run workshops in various places around Australia and overseas. So the next workshop I'm running, let's have a look in my book. Um, I usually run my workshops here in Wonga Park, which is uh, east of Melbourne, near Warrandyte. Um, my next workshop is in, is in uh, Rosebud or Rye on the on February 9, 10, 11th. And I'm running one in Warrnambool on March 9, 10, 11th. So I usually run about uh, 10 workshops a year. And usually about a half of those are in Wonga Park and the others are wherever I end up. So if there's anyone overseas that wants a workshop and if it's a nice sunny place, I'll go and run a workshop there when it's winter in Melbourne. <laughs> well, I know Frances is from Perth, so she's probably saying, oh, can we do something in Perth maybe? Um, so there's another... There's another question here from Renee, and um, I'm going to let you answer this, even though I could, but her question was, can anyone learn to be a trainer or do you have to have a particular skill or gift? Now, Renee, are you meaning a trainer as in you're training other people to become trainers? Because that's what Russell is. He qualifies people and certifies them. Or you mean somebody who can then sit down and be a, a coach or a therapist or whatever you want to call it a, to facilitate individuals, just double check uh, with that, to actually coach someone. All right, so like what Russell did with Bidja, can anyone do that, I think is her question. Yes, well, I've just noticed here that quite a few people um, that are on this call are people who have done training with me as EFT practitioners. So to become a practitioner, there's a, a three or four day training, uh, and then you need to do some case studies, some supervision and mentoring. So I'll say this, that probably anyone could be, there are a few things that you really require. Uh, I'd say number one is to be teachable. Number two is to have compassion and a desire to help people. So if you're teachable, you have compassion for people and a desire to help, then you can be an, an EFT practitioner and I'm happy to train you. If you want from then to become uh, an EFT trainer, then once you've done the, the practitioner training, then you do the advanced training uh, and build up some practice, then you can train to be a trainer. Thanks, Russell. 
We've just got a question here from Michael and I love this question and I'm going to, can't wait to hear how you answer this. So Michael asks, I'd like to ask, can you use tapping to manifest, manifest things in life we would like to achieve in business? So instead that of removing like blocks, question. can we put new programs in? I, I'm a, I've actually been um, asked to go to Frankston with the Law of Attraction Meetup to work just on that. So it's, it's going to be a, uh, just a short one and a, half, one and a half hour introduction on how to access and eliminate your unconscious blocks to success. So let, let me explain it briefly this way. I've just did, done a little drawing here. See if I can get this page off. Now, people- Hold it, Hold it up, yeah. Hold it there, yeah. So people come to see us because there's some problem here. And we know that if we keep doing what we do, what we're doing now, we'll keep getting what we've also always got. We also know if we can change the way we think and feel and therefore the way we act, we can create the best possible outcome. Now, the skill with EFT is it's fairly easy for anyone to tap on what's currently in the way. But usually to make this permanent, we need to go back and find the core issues that set us up for that. And in most people, the biggest core issues are before the age of seven. So most frequently what I'm doing with people is people will come in with specific goals they want to achieve or specific problems they want to eliminate. And we work on that. Uh, for example, I had a client come to see me that I hadn't seen for nearly 10 years. And when he first came to see me, he was working in hospitality, was living in a house situation that he wasn't happy with. And, um, uh, and he didn't have enough money to buy himself a motor scooter. So I worked with him to clear some limiting beliefs and then went through the process of setting the intention of attracting what he wanted. And he was at a barbecue not long after that. And the guy said, I hear you're looking for a place to stay. He said, yeah. He said, well, come and have a look at this place I've got. And the guy showed him this lovely place in a well sought after suburb of Melbourne. And the, the guy said, I'm trying to remember the exact um, thing he told me. It was something like this. I'm probably going to misquote slightly, but the guy said, look, I'm an out of town businessman. I'm only coming here once a month. I need someone in the house you can house sit for me so you can live in this place free. And then he said, Oh, by the way, there's a car in the garage that'll need to be driven. And he threw him, so, threw him a set of keys. And then he said, Oh, you want this fuel card. <laughs> so I gave him a company fuel card. So now I, after I finished working with him, uh, I, I had the feeling he was going to be really successful. He called me recently. Um, his business was uh, was doing, I think it was around about a million dollars a month and he wants coaching to get his business to the next level. Yes, that was a month, not a year. So yes, EFT is great for clearing those unconscious blocks of success in business. And um, I had a client a little while ago who said, he said, well, I, I don't have any unconscious blocks. I said, well, if they, if they were, if you knew what they were, they wouldn't be unconscious, first of all. I said, but there's an easy way to tell. I said, um, how much would you like to be earning? He said, I'd like to be earning 250,000 per annum. I said, well, how much are you earning now? He said, 100,000 per annum. I said, well, that's easy. You have $150,000 worth of unconscious blocks. So, you know, any time we're not getting the results we want, it's it's primarily our mindset that's getting in the way. Hmm. And EFT is a very powerful tool for accessing that and resolving it so we can achieve whatever we want. Yeah, absolutely. And those that understand, I think there's a few people in here who have done a couple of my courses, not everybody. Once you start to understand um, what Nikola Tesla said, if you want to think of how the universe works, you've got to think of energy, vib vibration and frequency. So your body is always in a, in a frequency, always putting out a frequency. And what EFT is doing, it's, re, it's tuning that frequency for you. So you're 
tuning your vibration out of the limitations and into something greater. So Michael, absolutely, you can use it to start tuning because you. I know Michael knows uh, how energy works. So you can tune yourself to actually start to become the receiver of something at a greater level. So that's where it's really powerful to be able to do both. And as you're saying that, I'm thinking, I need to just pull out my old EFT um, tool bag and start using it a bit more for some more manifesting as well. So I don't think there's any more questions. Um, so thank you so much, everyone, for taking the time on a, on a Thursday evening to invest in yourself and to hear Russell. Thank you so much, Russell, for jumping on. Uh, thank you, Renee. I think you're still here for asking, can I talk to you about how EFT works and then prompting me to have this brilliant idea to get Russell on to have a chat. I, I hope it's been, um, I hope it's been what you wished for Renee and everybody else. So if you want to get hold of Russell, I will send out an email to everyone with those things that he has offered uh, to give you. So you will have his contact details there as well if you want to reach out for anything else from him. So uh, many, many blessings and thank you, Russell and Vidya. Once again, thank you so much for being a, a really noble and willing and courageous participant. Even though you're still a little skeptical, how did this work? I've got a big smile on my face now and, you know, I'm feeling lighter, but, you know, I don't get it, but doesn't matter. Sometimes in in life you don't need to get it just get the results and move forward right so russell have you got any parting words or anything to say to anyone anyone as we finish up well first of all I'd like, I'd like to say to vidya um what i would like her to do is if she gets a headache again to give me a call straight away wow. usually <laughs> usually we can resolve that on the phone in in five or ten minutes okay just to get some tapping yep. and i want to offer that as a, a thank you for being for having the courage to be our volunteer on here. Oh, well, um, thank you. Thank you for, I, I mean, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I'll, I'll go, I didn't know what it was about, so I'll go read up something. But uh, yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Yeah, H have a look at that AMET International website. Yeah. That's probably yeah. one of the best out there. Okay. Um, and there's another one that's quite good by Gary Craig, which is emofree.com, E-M-O free. Gary Craig being the founder of EFT. Yes. Okay. So right. Gary. Gary Craig, G-A-R-Y, surname C-R-A-I-G. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. And if anyone wants to, wants to look at that, I'm having a, I'm having a get together in Frankston on, uh, I think it's the, I think it's the 1st of December. I'll just check my book. Um, yeah, I haven't put that online yet. I'll, I will be putting it on my meetup group in the next couple of days. Um, that will be at 1 p.m. in, in Frankston. And, it, well, it's almost a free event. I'm just, the ladies running it just wants $10 to cover the cost of the hire of the venue. And we'll be doing an hour and a half on accessing and resolving the unconscious blocks of success. So uh, that, that's a good, almost free thing for anyone to get along to. Thank you so much, Russell. So enjoy your evening, everyone. Make sure that you practice it a little bit more so it becomes repetitious for you. Remember where the points were to tap and, and use the tool as well. It's been something that I pull out every now and then, but listening to Russell, who does it daily just to tap for the sake of tapping, I think, wouldn't that be nice to be floating around all day? So enjoy, enjoy the tool that you have. If you've got any questions, reach out to Russell. And I think there are a couple of people, if they want to put their comments in here, who are EFT practitioners, if you want to put that in the chat to say, I'm a practitioner. And if you want to reach out to those people as well, you, I'm sure you can find them. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you again, Russell. And um, we will see you all next time we have something that we have that's worthwhile sharing with you. So enjoy your evening, everyone. Thank Bye you. for now. Turning into the most curious adventure I've ever had.